Hey everyone, it's Nate here with another Python video. Today we are going to talk about how to upload your data that you have in the pandas data frame to a database in the cloud. So this is a continuation of a video series that I started a few months ago. The video series is the one and only data science project you need, where I introduce the infrastructure you could build for all of your data science projects. So in the first video, I showed you how to extract data from an API and save it to a pandas data frame. And now in this video, we're gonna take that pandas data frame and then upload that to a database in the cloud. So why is this important? Why is this a skill set that all data scientists need to learn? So the number one reason is because of memory issues. We don't necessarily want to save all of our data locally on our computer and then process all of that. Our computers are not going to be able to handle it. So we want to save all of our data to a database in the cloud or somewhere else on another server. And the second reason is because you can save different versions of your data, like cleaned up versions of your data in the database. That way you don't have to rebuild and reclean your data from scratch every time you're running an analysis. The third reason is because all companies have data stored in databases. So it makes sense to learn how to pull and push data to and from a database. So let's walk through how to load data from a pandas data frame to a database in the cloud. I'm gonna be using AWS, Amazon Web Services. And then also let's learn how to update the same table with newly retrieved data from your API. So this is a real world scenario that we'll be handling. This is something you'll get on the job just needing to update tables continuously uh, with newly refreshed data. And lastly, let's do this in a scalable way. Let's write code with great software development fundamentals so that our code can handle millions, if not billions of rows of data. All right, so let's get started. If you like content like this, please subscribe to this channel. Thanks, and see you at the end of the transition. All right, so the first step is really just setting up our workstation. What I wanna set up first is a database in the cloud if it hasn't been set up yet, right? So I'm using, as you can see on the screen, I'm using Amazon RDS right here, uh, AWS, and I created a Postgres database called database.yt. It's a micro instance, so they're actually free for anybody to really just spin up and play around with. Uh, so I encourage everybody to get on AWS and just start up micro instances to play around with databases. If I click into this database here, I'll basically have everything I really need to connect to that database. So really the endpoint is right here, the port number is here, and hopefully you saved your username and password to actually get into that database. So we'll use these this database and the credentials to connect to it using Jupyter Notebooks or Google Colab. So that's the next thing to set up. I've spun up a, a Google Colabs a notebook here, which is exactly the same as a Jupyter Notebook. I kind of just like using Google Colabs because it's very easy to spin up and it saves to my Google Drive. So the first thing we want to do is make a connection to our database. So because it's a, a Postgres database, what I want to do is pip install a Psycho PG2, which is a Postgres wrapper that allows you to connect to a Postgres database from Python. So I am pip installing uh, PsychoPG2 onto the Colab server, and then I'm gonna be importing the library PsychoPG2. And then the last thing I wanna do is import pandas as PD. All right, so I'm just gonna run this line of code here, and it's run successfully here. So the next thing I wanna do is upload the data that we're gonna be working with, that we're gonna be uploading to our database in the cloud. So I mentioned before that our data is stored in a pandas data frame that we grabbed from an API, specifically from the YouTube API. That's stored in a different notebook. So what I did was I saved it as a CSV, and I'm gonna upload the CSV into this notebook. But what I wanna say is that you can actually just just use the same notebook uh, with the API connection so that you don't have to transfer CSV files from one notebook to another. That would actually make it much easier. Because I wanna keep the projects kind of clean for these videos, I just am working with the CSV files that I will then convert into a pandas data frame. 
So I'm just gonna upload the data here. It's called YouTube vids uh, first pull and it's on the server right now. And then just to read the data, I'm just using the read CSV method uh, from pandas to read the CSV and convert it to a pandas data frame, specifying the index column here. And the first five rows should look exactly like this. So if you followed my previous video on grabbing a data from the YouTube API, this is the exact same data set. So we have the video ID, the video title, the upload date, and the view and like and comment counts that we wanna then upload to a database in the cloud. So to my AWS database. So this is the data that we're gonna be uploading. And the next thing we wanna do is connect to our database. So we have our credentials. We have the host name, which is really uh, the IP address of our database. As you can see here, the database name, the port, the username, and the password of that database. So now we're gonna be using the PsychoPG library here to connect to our Postgres database on AWS. So we are gonna be using the connect method here to connect to our database. And the parameters that are required to connect are host, database, user, password, and port. All right, so basically everything we have here. So what I'm gonna actually do is uh, just pass these variables to the method itself. So host is going to be host name, and the other variables and parameters are passed down just like this. I'm also gonna save this connection as a variable called con for connect, and I'm gonna initialize it here as well as none. So this will provide a connection to our database. So what I also wanna do is check for errors just in case we have trouble connecting to that database. So what we're going to do is implement a try and an accept. So it's going to look like this. So try this connection. If it doesn't work, raise the error, right? And so there's an operation error if you can't connect to the database that gets triggered. And what we're gonna do is just print out the variable E, the, the error itself. And then lastly, if there is no error, just print out connected. So this is gonna allow us to connect to our database. So what I wanna do next is wrap this into a function so that it's isolated from other parts of the notebook and we can reuse this function for anything we wanna do in the future. All right, so our function is gonna be called connect to DB and I am passing through all of these variables here that connect to the database, uh, we're using it in this function and it's gonna be passed through this uh, to this connect method here. And then it'll go through the try and accept and print connected if we are successful. And then it's going, the function itself is gonna return this connection if successful. All right, so now let's test out this function. I'm gonna be calling the function uh, connect to database here. And I'm gonna drop this code block to the bottom. So we're gonna execute the function first, build it up and then we are going to use this function next. And it looks like we're able to connect to our database. So the next step is to create our database table um, so that we are able to push data from our notebook to the database in AWS. So what I wanna do, I'm going to move down this read CSV down to um, you know, our create table, just so we have an idea of what the schema looks like. The schema or the database columns or these pandas data frame columns are always going to be the same so we want to basically replicate what we're seeing here in the notebook back up to the database table so just looking at the column names i'm going to create a sql create table command that basically creates this exact table or the shell of this table i'm saving it in a variable called create table command and it's just a, a regular sql command that will create uh, the table if it doesn't exist the table is going to be called video and then we have here just the column names, right? Video ID, video title, all the way down to comment count. And then I'm specifying the data type. And then I'm saying uh, not null as a constraint. So this table and all the columns will match this pandas data frame here. So what we need to do next is push this command from this Python notebook up to our Postgres database. And so in order to do that, I'm going to wrap this command into a function that I could use to create tables. And as you can see here, I just wrapped it into a function called uh, create table. I'm gonna pass this cur variable here, which stands for cursor. I'll show you what that's about a little later. And then what we're gonna use is the execute command uh, to execute this SQL command on our Postgres database. So let me show you how that's done. 
Okay, so the first thing we want to do is create a, a cursor variable here. So we have our connection to the database, and then we're going to use this cursor method here and save it to a variable called cur. And that's going to essentially be passed to this create table uh, function here. And so just to give you a little bit of context, this cursor method here, or this cursor command, allows you to run SQL commands and fetch results from the database. So it basically allows Python code to execute SQL commands in your database session. So now that we have the cursor uh, command built, we're gonna use the create table function here that I created up here. And then we're gonna execute on this create table function to build our table. Okay, so it looks like everything was executed successfully. Let's now take a look at the back end to see if we can see a table there. Uh, what I forgot to mention is sometimes you need to commit your code and to commit the SQL code, you just do a con.commit to do that. Um, and it'll just execute the SQL command onto the database. So if we now just take a look at our tables, I'm gonna do a select star from the videos table that we just created. And as you can see in this bottom uh, output here, we have all of the columns that we've built in the create table command. We just don't have any of the data. So now the next step is to populate this table in the database with data. So in order to push the data from our pandas data frame to a database on AWS, there's going to be an insert and an update SQL command that we're gonna be using to perform that task. But how we do it really depends on the nature of the data. So there's two use cases that I can think of. You can have a database table that once you have data in there, that those rows are never updated again. And so think about this as like bank transactions or say logging of user events. These are just like snapshots in time that aren't gonna be changed. The second type of data are basically records or rows that get updated with time. So this is definitely the case here. I have a list of videos on my YouTube channel and a count of the views and comments and all of that. Those counts change with time. So anytime I refresh that data, those counts are also different. And so I need to update existing rows. In addition, I need to insert new videos that I make that I put in my channel, right? So there is definitely an update command on existing videos and an insert command on new videos that I need to write. In addition to that, there are scalability issues. As the data grows, my update and my insert commands also grow. I don't necessarily want to write huge insert or update commands because they can take up a lot of memory on my computer. I'm going to be updating videos one by one and it's going to either be an insert command or an update command. And so what I want to do is have a checker or write a checker to see if a video exists first. All right, so that's the first step before we write this update and insert command. So let me show you how to do that. So what I wanna do first is write down this logic uh, as pseudocode first to build a skeleton where I can uh, put in all my code. So that's gonna look like this. As I mentioned, what I wanna do is go row by row and check to see if a video exists in the database. So what we're gonna be doing is going through the pandas data frame for, so the, the list of videos that I have row by row, and let's check if the video exists. So I'm gonna write a function for that. If the video exists, update that row, update the counts. If that video doesn't exist, let's just append that video to the database table. So effectively, we're gonna be writing an insert command here and an update SQL command here. But the first thing we wanna do is write this check if video exists function first. Okay, so to check if a video exists, it's a really simple SQL command that we're gonna execute. We're gonna select the video ID because the video ID, if we look at uh, this pandas data frame that we have here, the video ID is the primary key. So we're gonna check to see if the video ID in the database table matches the video ID that we have in the pandas data frame here. So that's why there's this where video ID equals this parentheses S, so this parameter. This parameter is gonna be coming from the pandas data frame. It's gonna be going through row by row and putting this value into the SQL 
query. And then it's going to be putting this value into the SQL query and then basically just cross checking with the database table to see if that video ID exists there. Again, if it exists, we perform an update. If it doesn't exist, we perform an insert. Okay. So, so the next thing we do is we execute this command and we're passing the query here, which is this variable uh, and this SQL code here. And because we have this parameter, the video ID, we're also passing the video ID itself as a tuple, as you can see here. This is the way uh, Python wants it to be done. So we have to pass the video ID as this tuple here. And the last thing we're gonna do, we're gonna wrap these commands into a function called check if video exists. We're gonna pass the cursor as well as the video ID that we grab from uh, using this for loop here. So this is kind of where we're gonna plug and play our function, right? And then the last thing that we're gonna return is a fetch one is not none. And so what that means, what fetch one does is it will return a single row from a table. So if a video is found with the required video ID, it should return the row. If it doesn't, it will return a none. So basically what this is saying is that if you actually get something, return that, return whatever it is. If you don't get anything, it means that the video doesn't exist. It's a none. And then we can go to the else section of this for loop and perform an append or an insert. All right, so this now, this check a video exists function is done. We're gonna test it when we build our update and insert functions here. What I'm gonna do is just group this function with the other functions that we've created. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is uh, write this update row function. So if the video exists in the database table, we want to write an, a SQL update command to update all of the view counts that we have. So that's going to be a relatively simple SQL update command. So here's what that update command is going to look like. So we have an update video. So we're updating the videos table and then we're going to be setting new values for all of the columns, right? So the video title, in case I rename a video, the view count, the like count, the dislike count, and the comment counts are all going to be updated uh, where the video ID is what we specify. So with this SQL command, we have a bunch of parameters as you see here, these parentheses S's. We need to pass values to this query. So to pass values to the SQL query here, I'm gonna go back to my pandas data frame. And if I go here, my pandas data frame basically has video title, upload date, view count, like counts. So all of these variables have already been named in my pandas data frame. And all I have to do is access this pandas data frame. So what I'm going to do is create a variable called vars to update. It's going to basically go into my pandas data frame and grab the values from these variables here from these columns in my pandas data frame. So the last thing to do, just like the others, is wrap this up into a function of its own. I'm going to name this function update row just like this right here, and I'm going to pass the cursor and then all of the variables from my pandas data frame to this SQL command here. So we have the query, like I mentioned before, vars to update all of the uh, variables from my pandas data frame. And then I'm gonna execute that query by passing the query, the SQL query here, and then um, all of the variables to update. So this function is done. This function is taking several parameters from our pandas data frame. So we need to update this line of code here and uh, actually pass those parameters to the function itself. All right, so the question is, what parameters are we gonna be passing and how do we actually do that? The first parameter we know we're gonna be passing is this cur parameter here. So I'm just gonna type in C-U-R-R. -R. So I'm just gonna pass that parameter in. The next are the video IDs, video titles, and all of these counts here. So then the question is like, how do we actually access that from this uh, for loop where it's I comma row in DF iter rows. So if you're not used to writing for loops for pandas data frames, it's done in a unique way using this iter rows that gives you both an index that's I and the row itself, right? So we actually wanna leverage this row variable here. So in order to do that, I'll, I'll write the first one. We are gonna be grabbing the row uh, and from the row, we are gonna be grabbing video title. We know the first parameter here is video ID. Uh, we know it's contained, the data is in this row right here, this row variable. So in order to access that, 
we're going to be typing row and then video ID to access that actual video ID. And if we follow the same pattern for all of the other parameters that we need to pass through to the function, it'll look like this, where we're passing the row and then the video title and then all of the counts as you see here. So now our update function is finished. And I'm gonna move this function up with the other functions. But what about videos that don't exist in our database table on AWS? We can take care of that by writing another for loop. But before we do that, what we can do is store all of those new videos that need to be inserted into the database table. We can store all of those video IDs in its own variable. So what I'm gonna do here is change this line of code where I'm gonna have a temporary data frame. But what about all of the new videos in my pandas data frame that isn't in my database table? we need to write an insert command that will insert those new videos into the table itself, into the database table. So we can write an insert SQL command to do that. Uh, but what I wanna do first is actually store all of those new video IDs into its own pandas data frame. So I'm gonna create a temporary pandas data frame here called temp.df. And what this is basically saying here is that if we check if the video exists, if the video exists, we're gonna update the row. If it doesn't exist, append that new video and all of its information to a, pan a new pandas data frame called temp.df. And then the next thing we wanna do is actually initialize or build the shell of this pandas data frame so we can actually append the information to that data frame. So we know it's gonna basically mimic our uh, pandas data frame structure here. So let's just create a blank uh, pandas data frame. We're gonna build it above uh, this for loop here. And it's just uh, building a pandas data frame with these columns. And these columns are basically the exact same columns that you see here uh, where our pandas data frame lies. And we build a shell of this so that we can append new videos to this uh, variable or to this pandas data frame called tempdf. And of course, what we wanna do is wrap this whole thing into a, its own function so that it's isolated from the rest. This function is called update db. And basically what this function is going to do is it's going to create a pandas data frame called tempdf. And then it's gonna go through this for loop where it's gonna to check to see if a video exists in the database table on AWS. If it does exist, it's gonna update the row if it doesn't exist, we're gonna take that video ID and all of its data and store it in this temp df, this new pandas data frame. We're gonna then, I will then write a new function using a SQL insert to in, insert the new video IDs to the database table. So what we wanna do last is return the temp data frame because we're gonna to need to know what these new videos are. All right, so before we run this update function, let's just uh, group it with the other functions here to keep the code clean. All right, so now in order to run this function here, we're gonna execute that function down here, update db, pass the cursor that we've um, initialized right here, and then pass the data frame, the pandas data frame, that we've read into our notebook here. And then because if you remember, the update function uh, returns the temp df which is really a list of all of the new uh, videos that are not in the database table yet because it's going to return that we need to save it so we're going to save it in a variable called new vid df or new videos data frame and then that's how we're going to run this update db function all right so let's connect back into the database create the cursor we don't need to run this create table command because we already created the table and then let's run this update db command here and once once that's done let's commit all of the SQL commands to the database. Okay, so all the code has executed. What are we expecting? Well, let's take a look at the function again. We go through our uh, pandas data frame as you see in this bottom here. And basically we're checking to see if the video exists first. If it exists in the database table, we're gonna perform an update command. The update command is up here. It's a, just a, a regular update SQL uh, command. There are no 
videos in the database table yet because we haven't inserted them in. So all of the videos would go into this else statement here where we're actually building this temp DF to store all of the new videos so we can perform an insert command later on. So what I'm expecting is all of my videos making it to this uh, variable here called new video DF. And if what if I uh, check the output, I have 71 rows that represent 71 videos in my channel and all of the information here. So this is exactly what I'm expecting. And the next thing to do is write the insert command so I can actually push that to my database table. Okay, so writing this insert command is going to be identical to how we wrote the update SQL command. So first what we have is a regular uh, SQL insert query here. Insert into the table name videos and then insert all of this data here, right? And then the values are all placeholder values for what I get and all of the values are gonna be passed to uh, the SQL query here. So what are we gonna be passing? We're gonna be passing our data from uh, our pandas data frame uh, from, these, from all of these columns here, just like our update SQL command. And then lastly, we're gonna execute that SQL command using the execute function here. We're gonna be passing the insert into video SQL command, so it's this SQL command here. And then because they have, we have placeholder values for actual data, we're gonna be passing the data through this variable called rows to insert, and that's here. And of course, everything needs to be wrapped into a function like we've done with the other stuff. So that function is gonna look like this. We have a function named insert into table, and then I'm passing the database cursor and all of the video data. And then we again have the SQL query here, the data to actually insert, and then the execution. So this is exactly like the update SQL queries. So if you have any questions about what any of this stuff means, cause I kind of glossed over it, go back to the update section uh, to get more information. Now what we're gonna do next is write a for loop to insert all of this data, all of the video data that we have to our database table. And again, for scalability and for performance, what we wanna do is write a for loop so we insert one video at a time rather than inserting all of the videos all at once because you might hit performance or memory problems that way. All right, so let's write our for loop to insert these videos into our database table. So that for loop is basically gonna look like this. It's very similar to the update for loop that we, we wrote, uh, but what we're doing is we're gonna be using iter rows again, and then we're gonna be calling this insert into table function that we wrote up here. Then we're passing all of the parameters of the video, all of the data, and it's going to be inserting all of that data into our database table as you see up here in this function. And so now the last thing is to wrap this into a function. I'm going to wrap this. I'm going to name this function append from df to db and pass the cursor and the pandas data frame that we have. All right, so let me move these functions to where all the other functions are. Okay, so now to insert all of the new videos into our database table, we want to use that function. So what we're going to do is call this function, append from df to db, pass the cursor, and then pass this um, and pass this new vid data frame, right? Because this pandas data frame contains all video data that's not currently on the database table. So what we want to do is pass that pandas data frame to this function here. All right, so let's test it out. Let's connect back into the database, create the cursor, and then I'm just going to execute this append function that we wrote and then commit all of the SQL queries. Okay, let's see if that worked. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my IDE that I can use to connect into my database. I'm gonna run the select star from videos query here. And what I have are 71 rows, so 71 videos. And I have all of my video data that were was basically inserted into my database table. So that function worked. So that's all the code we're gonna write. We took a pandas data frame and uploaded all of the videos, all of that data into a database table. And what I told you before is that the nature of this table is that all of the records get updated every time we refresh the data, right? Every time I'm pulling from the YouTube API, all of the counts are gonna be different, as well as new videos are gonna be part of that data pull. 
right? So let's test out if the update command actually works to see if we get uh, new video counts. And then let's take a look to see if the insert command will also catch new videos. Okay, so we're gonna track a few things in this experiment. So I just uh, ordered the, the video table by the upload date. So the latest uh, date, the latest video that I have in my table is this step-by-step -step approach to solving any data science SQL interview question by Twitch. And then let's just keep track of this view count here. It's 422, all right? So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull new data from the YouTube API and then save that into a CSV file. Thankfully, I did that already. I'm gonna upload the second pull to Google Colab. So I have a YouTube vid second pull here. And all I really wanna do is just rename this to uh, the new um, CSV file second pull. Just gonna run this again. And as you can see here, uh, I have this new video called Working with APIs in Python, and then the step-by-step -step approach, that Twitch video that uh, I mentioned before, the view count is now 1579. So we wanna test these two things to see if uh, our code will actually update and insert as expected. All right, so let's test it out. We are gonna connect back into the database, build the cursor. We don't need to create the table. We are going to be running this update command, but I'm gonna save it into a new variable. Maybe I'll just call it new vid df2 and then pass that to this insert. So it inserts the new, the new video that we caught. So let's just run this update command here. It's gonna take a few moments. Uh, I'm just gonna run this commit command on top of that. And now all of the existing videos have been updated. All the counts have been updated. Now we we saw one new video that wasn't on the database table. So let's append that, let's insert that video in, commit that. Now let's go back to our SQL IDE to check to see if all of those changes actually made it to the database table. I'm gonna run this again and look at that. The We have 72 videos here. So we have inserted one video working with APIs in Python for your data science project. And then that step-by-step -step approach, that Twitch question, it's updated. The count is updated to 1579. So before it was 422, now it's 1579, the update command worked the insert command inserted all of the new videos and that's how you take a pandas data frame and upload the data to your database table up in the cloud all right guys that's it for me all of this code and the notebook itself is going to be uploaded to github and i'll have a link in the description below basically what we did in the past few videos was build a data pipeline we extracted data from an api in this case the youtube api saved it as a pandas data frame that video is linked in the description below if you wanna know how to do that. And in this video, what we did was we took that pandas data frame and we uploaded that into our database table on AWS. So effectively, you've built a data pipeline. The only thing that's missing is adding in the scheduler so that you can automatically refresh your data from the API whenever you want. But this is really the start of building out your data science project. You're always gonna be grabbing and collecting data and then cleaning it up. This is really just a systematic way to grab data from whatever source you want and then push it to a database table. You're gonna need to know how to do this on the job, so you might as well get some training, get some experience before that. And again, the way we wrote the code is that it's scalable for millions, if not billions of rows. So you're never gonna have any performance issues or memory issues if you have a lot of data that you're playing with. So this skill set is directly transferable to a real job, and it's something that you can speak to on a job interview as well. All right, that's it for me and this Python series. If you like content like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys at the next video. Thanks.